Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Evening, morning, and noon I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. You are my God, have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 84 How I love your dwelling place, O Lord of armies! My soul grows weak and even wastes away, as I long for the courtyards of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God, Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow has found a nest for herself, where she may place her young near your altars, O Lord of armies, my King and my God. How blessed are those who live in your house! They are always praising you. How blessed is everyone whose strength is found in you! The highways to Jerusalem are in their hearts. As they pass through the valley of Baca, it becomes full of springs. The autumn rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one will appear before God in Zion. O Lord God of armies, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Look upon our shield, O God. Look with favor on the face of your anointed one. Yes, one day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather wait at the doorway of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord is a sun and shield. God gives grace and glory. The Lord does not withhold any good thing from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of armies, how blessed is everyone who trusts in you. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Numbers chapter 11. The people were complaining about their hardships, so that the Lord heard it. When the Lord heard it, his anger burned. So the Lord's fire burned among them, and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. The people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord. So the fire died down. They named that place Taborah, because the Lord's fire burned among them. The foreign rabble who were among the Israelites were overcome by their craving. The Israelites also wept once again and said, Who is going to give us meat to eat? We remember the fish we ate in Egypt free of charge, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our lives are wasting away. We have nothing at all to look at except this manna. The manna was like coriander seed, and it looked like resin. The people went around and gathered it up. They would grind it in hand mills or crush it in a mortar. They would boil it in pots or make it into loaves. It tasted like a cake made with oil. When dew fell on the camp during the night, the manna fell along with it. Moses heard people from all the clans weeping, each one at the entrance to his own tent. At the same time, the Lord's anger burned fiercely, and Moses was displeased. Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your eyes? Why do you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people by myself? Am I the one who gave birth to them, so that you tell me to carry them in my arms to the land which you swore to their fathers, just as a woman who is nursing carries a baby? Where is their meat for me to give to all these people? Listen, they are weeping to me and saying, Give us meat so that we can eat. I am not able to carry all these people by myself, because that is too much for me. If you are going to treat me this way, please kill me right now. If I have found favor in your eyes, do not let me see my own ruin. So the Lord said to Moses, 
Gather seventy men from the elders of Israel for me, men whom you know to be elders and officers for the people. Take them to the tent of meeting, and make them stand there with you. I will come down and talk with you there. I will take from the spirit that is on you, and will put it on them. They will share the burden of the people with you, so that you will not have to carry it by yourself. Say to the people, Consecrate yourselves to be ready for tomorrow. You will eat meat, because you have wept, and the Lord has heard you say, Who will give us meat to eat? Yes, things were good for us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you meat, and you will eat. You will eat not just for one day, for two days, for five days, for ten days, not even just for twenty days, but for a whole month, until meat comes out of your nostrils, and you begin to loathe it. This will happen because you have rejected the Lord who is among you, and you have wept in his presence, saying, Why did we come out of Egypt? Moses said, I am in the middle of a people with 600,000 foot soldiers, and now you say, I will give them meat and they will eat for a whole month. If flocks and herds were slaughtered for them, would that be enough for them? If all the fish of the sea were caught for them, would that be enough for them? The Lord said to Moses, Is the arm of the Lord too short? Now you will see whether what I have said to you will happen or not. A wind sent out from the Lord brought quail in from the sea. The wind scattered them throughout the camp, and about a day's journey in any direction around the camp, about three feet deep on the ground. All that day, all that night, and all the next day, the people got up and gathered the quail. No one gathered fewer than sixty bushels. They spread them out around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth before it was chewed, the Lord's anger burned against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very severe plague. They named that place Kibroth Hata'ava, because there they buried the people who were overcome by their craving. From Kibroth Hata'ava the people traveled to Hatzeroth, and they stayed at Hatzeroth. The Word of the Lord. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17. Jesus said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for that person if a millstone would be hung around his neck and he would be thrown into the sea than for him to cause one of these little ones to sin. Watch yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him, even if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times returns to you and says, I repent, forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. The Lord said, If you had faith like a mustard seed, you could tell this mulberry tree be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Which one of you who has a servant plowing or taking care of sheep will say to him when he comes in from the field, Come at once and recline at the table? Won't the master tell him instead, Prepare my supper, and after you are properly dressed, serve me while I eat and drink. After that you may eat and drink. He does not thank the servant because he did what he was commanded to do, does he? So also you. When you have done all that you were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what we were supposed to do. On another occasion, as Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem, he was passing along the border between Samaria and Galilee. When he entered a certain village, ten men with leprosy met him. Standing at a distance, they called out loudly, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went away, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, 
glorifying God with a loud voice, he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, thanking him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus responded, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give glory to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go your way. Your faith has saved you. The Word of the Lord. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and to lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. Amen.